totality the outcome of fulfillment except from horizons beyond the mind totality is the outcome of fulfillment at every level of the being by fulfillment i categorically mean at every level of the being fulfillment comes through awareness awareness is at the core of each thought and action the only difference between deep dreamless sleep and awakened state the enlightened state is that of awareness in waking state we do not have awareness we have a choice to be happy or unhappy whenever a circumstance and situation comes we have a choice to be happy or unhappy if you accept it then you can be happy and if you do not then unhappiness is the way then there is a dreamless sleep but dreamless sleep is almost like death when there is no awareness and you are not even aware of what is happening when you become meditative even during the deep sleep and various stages of sleep then there comes an awakened state and this awakened state is the enlightened state and it is the state of awareness every moment you are aware normally in the sleep we toss and turn all night we are not even aware of it it is reported that when anand took initiation he asked buddha three things he said i am your elder brother before i take the initiation as an elder brother i ask you something because once i accept your disciplehood i will not be able to ask for those things so the first thing he said that you will not send me anywhere to propagate your message number 2 i will sleep in the same room where you will sleep third you will not meet any person without my presence whosoever you will meet i have to be present there buddha granted these three things and anand used to sleep in the same room as buddha slept and he watched buddha sleeping in the night one day he asked i have never seen you turning and twisting in the night changing the sides or anything you sleep in one posture many times in the night i wake up to see if there is any change in your posture buddha responded beautifully and it is the situation of the awakened ones human mind is restless and even in sleep it becomes restless and because of that restlessness we keep on turning and twisting you sleep in one posture and you get up in next posture sometimes your bed becomes a wrestling bout because of your constant turning and twisting and even when you turn the sides because sleeping in one side gives a physical tiredness so you must turn the side when you sitting on a chair you remember there is a bodily posture and that because of that bodily posture you may need to change although 
changing the positions more depends on the inner state of the mind. If you are arguing with someone and the person does not subscribe to your views, you become very restless, you keep on changing the postures, angles of sitting and this will be exhibited in total restlessness. One day try to do this, keep a mirror in front of you and act as if you are talking to someone. Use various gestures of anger, love, hatred, these various emotions and see how your bodily postures change. So Buddha said, there is no thought disturbance in my mind. So there is no need to change the postures. If the mind is tranquil, then there will be no change in your positions. When you see people are talking, there is so many gestures if they are giving you direction, they are using their hands to give you direction as if the person is watching you giving the direction. When you hear the awakened ones, there is no difference in the voice unless it is essential. When you are speaking, your voice changes. If you want to put your point, you have to be aggressive in your tone and so on and so forth. So Buddha said there is no need for me to turn the sides unless the body needs and even when the body needs to change the sides, I am aware that I am changing the sides. Most of the times when we do things like these, we are not even aware. You are talking to someone and the person, you are restless, the person is not paying attention to you. The anger, the frustration, those emotions begin to exhibit in many forms. Maybe your hand will start shaking, your shoulder may start dropping, your toe may start shaking vigorously and things like these may does happen. The only difference between waking state, sleep, dreamless sleep and awakened state is that of awareness. And it is because of awareness you put everything in the right perspective then there is no chaos. Every moment circumstance and situation comes. For example, you are driving and all of a sudden you realize that somebody is giving you a bad drive. You try to escape, go on the pavement and the other vehicles do not give you an opportunity to go back on the road and suddenly police encounters you and seeing the car on the pavement gives you a ticket. A circumstance and situation is there. The mysticism says why it happened I know it not and there is no need for me to know this. My awareness says that this is a situation, how am I going to respond to this as a reaction against that person who in the first place gave me the bad ride, that I had to go on the pavement to avoid the accident, or to the other drivers, fellow drivers who are using the road unconsiderately, or to the policeman who is not willing to accept your, your viewpoint 
and issues a ticket to you. All these things happen and in that we act according to our mind, according to our inner disturbance. Awareness that comes through the meditation make you respond to that situation out of your awareness. If you can be aware in your deep sleep that you are a Buddha, in every situation if you can remember that you are a Buddha, you are not aware even while you are awake and you want to be aware when you are in a sleep, then it cannot be. Buddha is one who is aware even while he is in deep sleep how to respond. He may be snoring just as you will hear his snoring. He also hears his snoring. The snoring is a physiological phenomenon. You are watching from outside, he is watching from inside. In fact, he is more aware of it than you are. Because you may be having a thousand and one thought, but he has no thoughts at all. This awakening renders him enlightened one. The awakened person is called enlightened because his awareness remains aflame 24 hours a day. He may look just like you, he may walk and talk and do everything just like you, but there is a lamp lit within. His awareness remains aflame 24 hours a day. It does not matter he is awake or he is asleep, whether he is doing something or not doing anything, nothing matters. Everything remains on the circumference. At the center there is only the flame of awareness. He experiences this flame of awareness as silence and bliss. This is one of the most significant things to understand. It is easy to be silent. Also it is easy to be blissful. But to be silent and blissful simultaneously is impossible for the mind to comprehend. I repeat, it is easy to be blissful, but to be silent and blissful simultaneously is impossible for the mind to comprehend. It can only be experienced at the ultimate peak, at the ultimate when all dualities merge and become one. There is constant duality in us. Silence and bliss are two poles apart. Hence it is easy to be on one polarity. If you are ready to renounce the other, you can easily have one. But to have one is to remain partial. And unless you are whole, you are never fulfilled. Only wholeness is holiness, only wholeness is flowering, blossoming, is fulfillment and leads to contentment. The person who has only a part of his being actualized remains in a constant conflict and inner turmoil with the other parts which is not actualized. He cannot dance. He is partially paralyzed. How can he dance? He cannot even walk. He needs a thousand and one supports or kinds of crutches. He is not able to stand on his own feet. He cannot live out of his own being. He needs this and he needs that. And the needs are infinite. So he goes on desiring and his mind remains a beggar. Certainly he cannot be an emperor. To be whole is to be an emperor. Silence is easy if you are ready to renounce bliss. 
That is what has been done for centuries by the so-called religious saints. They have decided to be silent and for that they have dropped the idea of being blissful. But then their silence is dead. It's the silence of a cremation ground. There is no flowering in it. Their silence is no longer alive and pulsating. It has no music. Their silence is like a graveyard. You cannot. You can whitewash the graves. You can keep them clean. You can even grow roses. But a graveyard is a graveyard. You can try to hide the facts, but they are there. And how long can you deceive? Maybe you can deceive others, but you cannot deceive yourself. You know that something in you has died. And the moment you drop cheerfulness, something in you stops singing. It is because of these so-called religious people that religion has become a graveyard. You can see this in the churches, synagogues, temples and the mosques. Wherever and whenever your so-called religious people gather together, they are always deadly serious. They cannot laugh. They have become incapable of laughter. There is no warmth because they are afraid. Warmth means love, joy, bliss and laughter. Just to be silent, they cut everything that could have disturbed their silence. Their silence is very arbitrary. It is a silence that can be disturbed by any means. Only a silence which cannot be disturbed is indeed a true silence. For this, there is no need to escape from the world. You can remain in the world, but do not allow the world to remain within you. What is the fear of the world? Why have these people been running away from the world? The fear is within. The fear is not in the world. They are afraid. If they are in the world, they may fall in love. They may start enjoying something. Or they may start living. What is wrong in falling in love? As you fall in love, grow into it. And then they may start forgetting their commitments to silence. They may start singing, afraid of their inner potentials. They escape from the opportunity where it can be realized. They imprison themselves in caves and monasteries. Of course, they become silent, but their silence is worthless. It has no value at all. It is not sacred or even alive. And if it is not alive, then how can it be sacred? Nothing grows out of it. It is a desert life. It is absolutely important, uncreative and insensitive. The routine-like religious attitude and its escapist tendencies are not going to help in any way. I am all for rejoicing. I would like the temples to be full of laughter and churches to be full of joy and the mosques full of music and dancing. Only then there is a possibility of a singing and dancing religion. Only then indeed there is a possibility of a singing and dancing religion.